Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. Welcome back to a Thursday night football DraftKings showdown for week four. We've got a game between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals playing on Thursday night. Most people aren't very excited about this game. I think it's going to be a fun game. Uh, not a really high scoring game. Not a ton of plays expected in this one. Both teams do tend to play a little bit slower than, well, one team tends to play a lot slower than we thought that they would, but... Uh, there are things that could happen to make this a little bit faster paced, but a lot of great, exciting young athletes in this game, like Joe Burrow and Joe Mixon and uh, Jamar Chase and Trevor Lawrence makes his first island game appearance. There's a lot of different things going on here. Uh, game has a total of 45 and a half. Bengals are favored by seven and a half. I'm going to take a look using the Fantasy Labs Optimizer to show you guys my process on how I build lineups as well as some analysis on the different players and how to put them together in your lineups. So thank you guys for being here once again. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell, leave me a reply down below and let me know what you think about Showdown. How do you play it? Do you focus on single entry? Do you focus on three max, 20 max? Do you play the, the big one and try and win that one? And what do you do to try and get yourself separated from the crowd in these showdown slates because there's a ton of overlap. So thank you guys for being here. Let's get to the video. He's a legend. So every time that we take a look at a showdown slate, the first thing that pops out is always, 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 always going to be the quarterbacks because they have the highest median projection of pretty much any player on the slate all the time. And they usually have one of the higher ceiling projections of the different players on the slate all the time. Now, the Bengals have not been throwing the ball as much as one, they did last year. And two, we kind of projected them to do. So like that was something that I guess I was wrong about through three weeks, uh, at least so far. The amount of times that they're going to drop back and throw the football. Uh, they've seen some success winning two of their first three games. They have to do something to try and keep Joe Burrow protected. Uh, and Joe Burrow going to be a somewhat popular captain, but with the amount that he's throwing the ball and the fact that he's not really a running quarterback, especially coming off of the knee surgery last season, uh, this might be a good week to underweight him at captain. Typically with these non-running quarterbacks, I like to cap them at like 5 or 7% uh, at quarterback. There's certainly the possibility. We did talk about the fact that he was going to uh, increase his touchdown percentage in 2021 versus where it was in 2020. He had like a 3% touchdown, two and a half, three percent touchdown percentage last season. That was completely unsustainable. Uh, so he was going to elevate. He was going to regress towards the mean, towards a 5% touchdown. He's, ex he's definitely exceeded that at this point, And he's been very good during seven touchdowns through three games. So he'd have to be super efficient with a lot of less targets where we're going to need to push his... Uh, to push the run pass mix, let's say, uh, for them is for Trevor Lawrence to be a little bit more efficient. Trevor Lawrence throwing a ton of interceptions. He's kind of flip-flopped with five touchdowns and seven interceptions so far for the Jacksonville Jaguars through three weeks. What I love about the way that the Jaguars are attacking with Trevor Lawrence, and I made a comment on Twitter last week that Trevor Lawrence is going to win somebody a million dollars this year. I, like, I, I honestly believe that Trevor Lawrence on a main slate is going to be a millionaire maker winning quarterback at some point in time because efficiency, not volume, is what drives quarterback scoring. And especially deep shots that you complete. And if you're efficient on one day, that makes you great for that one day. And there are a few quarterbacks in the league that throw the ball deep as many times so far through three weeks as Trevor Lawrence. It's basically the guys that you'd expect. It's like Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, and, and like Lawrence is like in the mix with those guys. Like he's not like behind them. He's like second in the league right now in terms of deep pass attempts, balls that carry over 15 yards in the air. They're just letting him rip and he's making mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes when you're a rookie. It's okay to take those lumps. But like, I like that they're not handcuffing the kid and making him just throw like horizontal raid type throws left and right and screen passes and this. Like, yeah, he's going to have an artificially high percentage. He's going to have less interceptions, yada, yada, yada. But like for us in fantasy and uh, for him in his career, you want him learning how to take those shots deep. So for fantasy purposes, 
he's definitely challenging downfield now if he's a little more efficient on one of those days he's going to win a millionaire maker for somebody now in terms of this showdown uh cincinnati's been pretty good their run pass mix has not been what we thought like they're projected for like 53 percent pass in this game last year they were like a 60 percent pass team and right now that's where jacksonville projects they project to play from behind in this game uh under sorry over a touchdown underdog in this game which means they're going to be playing from behind so if you think that burrow is going to be really efficient and he's going to play as your captain we want to make sure that we're going to pair him with uh, whether you're hand building or in a tournament uh in a lineup builder with a, at least two of his pass catchers jamar chase has been outstanding so far with four touchdowns through his first three games uh you remember the story about he, how he couldn't separate and couldn't catch the ball Ha! Uh, you know, he's fine. He's good. He's a good player. Good football player. Uh, so every lineup that has Joe Burrow at captain, I'm going to build a group that makes sure that I have at least two of all of his pass catchers. Now, Joe Mixon has been the guy that's really benefited uh, from the change that they've seen, but has not seen as many targets as I thought he would. Four in week one, which was encouraging, but three the next two weeks combined. Uh, not really what we want out of Joe Mixon. He's getting a ton of usage and all the snaps and all the carries. And anytime they get inside the five, they want to run the football because uh, it does a couple of things. One, it takes the pressure off the offensive line. Any offensive line would rather run block than pass block. Uh, so it gives that, you know, aspect. It also runs clock because their defense isn't the best in the league either. Uh, a la the, what was it? DeMarco Murray Cowboys when they had like really one of the worst defenses in the league that year that Murray had like 420 touches. And they said, look, we're not going to beat teams by going up and down the field. So we're going to try and deflate the ball a little bit and, and just run it a ton and bleed the clock and the uh, master time of possession and all those sorts of things. And that's kind of how since that's the, the roadmap that Cincinnati has gone with. I think Joe Mixon is going to be a really popular captain on Thursday night, but not somebody that I want to pair or force pair with Joe Burrow. If he ends up in Joe Burrow lineups as in the flex, that's fine, but I'm not going to force it. T. Higgins uh, missed last game. We're going to have to monitor his status throughout the week. He did, was, or not did, he was a non-participant in Monday's practice, monitor the Tuesday practice. We'll have news an hour and a half before the game. If he plays, he's going to be in that group. If he does not play, that bumps a few guys. It bumps somebody like Tyler Boyd. Uh, who only got six targets, but did catch a touchdown. I thought he'd get more work, but they just didn't have to throw the ball, as you could see by his uh, Burrow's attempts there. He would be in that group. Uzoma has looked pretty good so far, uh, but kind of just on very few targets. But when he's been out there, he has looked solid. They just don't go very many places with the ball. I'm going to include him in that group. I'm going to include the kicker in that group. Uh, Mike Thomas, Auden Tate, neither of them really did much. One target for Auden Tate in the absence uh, of Higgins, one target for Mike Thomas in the absence of Higgins. I'm just going to build a group with the guys that we project to be on the field. I would prefer it that Higgins is going to play and allow me to build out this group in that way. We're also going to build a bring back group for all the Joe Burrow lineups. That's going to include every potential offensive player on Jacksonville, including the quarterback Lawrence, including the running back Robinson and everybody else. Now, if we have Lawrence at quarterback, we're going to do the same thing. Robinson has been outstanding. And you remember in week one when everybody kind of panicked and said, oh my God, it's going to be Carlos Hyde. Well, like they were getting throttled by Houston. It was like 30 to three at halftime and they shut it down. And even in that week, James Robinson out snapped Carlos Hyde. And then he is getting 70 to 75% of the snaps. Is he getting the volume that he got last year with like 90 plus percent of the snaps and 90 plus percent of the running back touches for Jacksonville? No, but he's still getting more than most other running backs in the league. So he is extremely viable. Six targets in two of his three games so far. Three catches or more in every one of his games so far. Um, a viable captain that you don't have to pair with, but I would not use him in combination with Trevor Lawrence uh, as a force play. I'm going to force the outside pass catchers Jones, Chark, Chenault. Uh, they only employ pass catchers that have junior in their name. They just acquired Dan Arnold. So you're going to have to monitor and see if he is going to actually be on the field in this game. Will pair Lambo in that. Uh, man hurts probably. Agnew has been outstanding on special teams, but not getting any run. If you wanted to go for the double dip, it's just, it's really thin. If you're going to go with Agnew and Jacksonville's defense to try and get six points for the defense. And then on top of that, six points for the uh for the kick returner it's just a very thin route to go and it's not a route that i would highly recommend at all i am definitely going to be going with our rule of one defense plus kicker on each team so Bengals d uh jaguars d and the Bengals d has been 
solid this year. We look for pressure. We look for sacks. Four sacks, three sacks, three sacks. And against a team that turns the ball over a ton, Bengals D is going to be one of the more popular routes to go. Uh, I mistakenly put them in captain there. I'm not going to use a defense in captain. If a defense in captain wins showdown, this the miscalculation by the general public is that if you play 150 lineups, you're basically just going to cover everything. And like, I don't think that that's the way to go. I think that you need to try and overweight mistakes that the field is making and underweight mistakes that the field is making in both different directions. And to me, the Bengals are going to be overplayed in the captain spot. And the percent chance that the Bengals are the winning captain is going to be lower than the percent of people that are going to play the Bengals in the captain spot in spite of the seven interceptions and two lost fumbles by Trevor Lawrence. They're a good play. I'd rather have them down in here uh, because I think that you can fit all the guys that you want. So taking a look over at the lineup builder, we can build our position rules that we build and then you can change in or add in whatever else that you like. Pair our captain quarterback with at least two wide receiver, tight ends and kickers from the same team. Pair the captain quarterback with a running back, wide receiver, tight end uh, or quarterback from the opponent. Pair the captain wide receiver with one quarterback from their team. Tight ends with the quarterback from their team. If you're going to play a tight end in captain, I don't think you're doing that this week uh, with the low volume tight ends that are on this slate. And limit to it most, one defense. Thank you, Windows. One defense or kicker from the same game. We head right back over here, apply these settings, build 150 lineups. I build by ceiling. I've already limited my captains. I pick about four or five or six captains on every slate. I don't want to have lineups with everybody in captain i want to overweight the field on the guys that i think have a chance to be the highest scoring players on the slate uh and you got to be okay with not having the right captain uh if you want to you know like look if the defense wins in captain or a kicker is the viable captain to win that week that's not going to be a, a week that i win a whole bunch so here's the captain allocations it's got you can see i limited burrow to seven and lawrence to seven yes windows i know windows please I'm doing a video and then we'll pare down our, our allocations of all the other players that are in our different groups here and boost some and limit others. Uh, it only ends up with like 20% Jamar Chase on the first run. I'll probably have more than 20% Jamar Chase when the week gets here. So good luck to you on Thursday. Drop a like, subscribe, jump in the Discord. And go check out the tools that they have over at Fanny Flag. Bye. Windows! He's a legend.